Hi guys, my name is Aria, and I'm sure a lot of you are probably studying for the June ACT right now. So if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, I got a 34 on my ACT. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys real specific timing, test day strategies, and studying strategies in general for the ACT as a whole. So in the next few videos, I'll be breaking down how to specifically time and study for the math section, the English, the reading, and the science. But this is just how to study and time yourself for the whole entire test. So I just want to preface this whole video by saying I am not a genius. Anyone can get a 34 or a 35 in their ACT, I truly believe, with just a good work ethic and putting in the time. When I was studying, my goal score was a 34, and I scrolled through like hundreds of YouTube videos and college confidential posts and all that, trying to find um, like specific real strategies on how anyone can get a 34. And I felt like they were all very vague and general, and the people were just smart, and that's why they were getting these really good scores. But I am here to tell you that it is possible without being super smart or having taken like calculus and all these really high level like math and science courses, it's not needed and anyone can do it. So my first piece of advice is on timing. Timing is the biggest thing that really differentiates the SAT from the ACT, not even content. The content on the ACT itself, even the math and grammar sections, it's really not terrible and it's not super high level. It's you're just you're really time pressured on this test. So the biggest thing is to bring a watch on the day of the test. Either leave it on the desk right in front of you or put it on your wrist, like whichever one you prefer, and set it to 12 o'clock before each section. That way you're not trying to do like mental math in the middle of the section, trying to figure out like how much time has gone by how much time you have left and how many questions you have left and like trying to divide to see how much time you can spend per question you're already super time pressured and you don't want to waste your time doing that so by sending your watch to 12 o'clock you can very easily see how much time has gone by and how much time you have left and it's just gonna save you a whole chunk of time when you're actually taking the test on test day and it'll save you some stress too my second piece of advice is on when to take it. So I would give yourself two to three like solid months to study before you take the test. If you're a sophomore right now and you're watching this video, please study over the summer and take it the fall of your junior year. That's what I did. I'm a junior right now and I took it in September of um, this year, of my junior year. And I studied the summer between my sophomore and junior year, got it done in September. And now my junior year, like, hasn't been super stressful a lot of my friends waited because my school advised against it take like advised against you taking it in the beginning of your junior year i'm not really sure why but they did and so a lot of people waited and they're like hella stressed now because you're trying to study for the act maybe the sat as well um you have ap's finals like subject tests and just junior year as a whole is stressful so take some of that stress out of your life and get it done in the fall it it's so worthwhile one note about when to take it is that, especially for the math section, you do need a lot of Algebra 2 to get a 34 plus. Like, if you don't, if you haven't taken Algebra 2, you're probably not going to get a super high score on the math section. However, if you haven't taken pre-calc or calculus, don't worry about it. I'm taking pre-calc my junior year right now, and I took the ACT without any pre-calc knowledge, and I got a 35 on the math section. So it's totally doable without it. There's some very basic pre-calc stuff on there, but I'll talk more about how to study for that on your own, and it's not a big deal if you don't know it. It's just a couple questions, and you can still get a 34, 35, or even 36. Whether you're studying over the summer or during the school year, how to study is the same thing. So my next tip is just on how to study for the ACT as a whole. I advise against ACT um, prep classes actually, not because they're not good or worthwhile, it's just you don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the tutor and a lot of times they just give you very general tips or very just general like content and sometimes they're not even real ACT practice tests. So the way to study, like my biggest tip on how to study is to get this official ACT prep guide. I'm sure you all have seen it before. It's available most places. There are four real previously administered ACT tests in there and I will link a website down below called Blog Prep Scholar. Some of you might have heard of it. They have five additional previously administered ACT tests. So that's nine total. And don't waste your time using the Barron's Review Book or Princeton Review Book because 
those aren't actual ACT tests. The style is different, the content is a little different in um, the practice tests they give you in those books. So when you actually get to the test on test day, it's going to be a little bit different and you might get flustered. Your timing schedule might be off, the content will be a little different, the style of the questions will be different and you might get flustered. So it's just not worthwhile using those books. Get real practice tests and study using real previously administered tests. All I did to study was take those nine tests. I studied over the summer and I kind of broke them up and did it that way. And when I took the test in September, I swear like some of the questions were the exact same ones that I've seen before, just with slightly different numbers. Like especially on the math section, you will come to see that there are like definitely patterns in the ACT because they can only test you on a limited amount of topics. So using real tests, will help you so much because on test day you will see the same question show up over and over again. So with your nine practice tests, what I would advise doing is save two to take sitting down four hours mimicking test conditions. Take one of those about one month into your studying, maybe about like when you're halfway done with your studying, and save the other one for the week before the ACT. Now with your other seven tests, break them up into each of their four sections, English, math, reading, and science, and take one section a day, time yourself, grade it, and then really dissect your mistakes and understand the concepts like behind why you got a question wrong. Um, because the exact same question won't show up on test day, but like I just said before, the same concept will and maybe just with slightly different numbers. So if you understand why you got a question wrong, you'll really be in good shape for the actual test. The real ACT prep book that I just showed, the red one, has answer explanations in the back, but sometimes they aren't super helpful or you just need like a little bit more guidance. So honestly, just Google it. Like for me, I really struggled with factorials, combinations, and permutations because all of that was really new for me. And I think I used the website Magoosh. I just spent like an hour on there. They had a little tutorial on factorials, permutations, and combinations. And by the end, like I understood it well enough to get those questions right on test day. So all you need is just a little bit of practice with those questions and just a little bit of knowledge about it. And if you Google it, there'll be plenty of information and that's all you need. My last tip for this video is to, if you have the means to, get a subject specific ACT tutor. So don't get like a general ACT tutor um, because a lot of times they just give very general tips or they don't know how to specifically help you with like a specific question on a specific topic. But for example, if you're really struggling with just ACT math and you need to improve your score by a few points, um, if you want, this is just extra, you don't need one, but you can get a specific like ACT math tutor. And when you're really dissecting your mistakes and going over your math mistakes, you should have very specific questions. And if Google can't help you and like the book explanations can't help you, the tutor definitely will be able to. So that's just kind of an extra kind of piece of advice. And they might have some supplementary materials as well. Um, that can always be helpful. But like I said, it's not needed. If you do nine practice tests, those nine that I said that were available, that's really all you need to do to get a 34. That's all that I did. And I just Googled the stuff that I didn't know. And it ended up working out fine for me. A couple just general strategies that you've probably heard before, but just to kind of um, reiterate them if you haven't is one always bubble in your answers as you go you might think you'll have time at the end to bubble in but I can assure you that you won't the ACT is very very time intense as you probably know and you'll just be extra flustered on test day already because you'll be super stressed so bubble in as you go the last thing you want to do is to not have time to bubble in the answers to questions that you know are correct so definitely do that the second thing is to not get flustered on test day. Um, the test I took, the actual ACT test I took in September was a lot harder than the practice tests I took, even though the practice tests that I took were real previously administered ACTs. So I kind of freaked out, but there's no need to because generally all that means is that the curve is higher, like it's more forgiving. And I think that was the case on my test. I would assume so. It was a little bit more forgiving and it kind of boosted my score a little bit. So you just, you never know. So don't get super flustered. And lastly, don't get discouraged. 
while you're studying. The first ACT test I ever took, I wanna say I got like a 29, the first practice test I took, and then I brought it up to a 34 on test day. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I am not a genius, I'm really not. Some of the other ACT videos you've watched on how to get a 34, it might seem like the person is just really smart and that's how they did it, but I can assure you that was not the case with me. It was just a lot of work and figuring out how to take the test, but mostly hard work like in breaking down those nine ACT tests I talked about, but it's totally possible for anyone, don't get discouraged. This was a very general, kind of like ACT strategy list. Even though I gave specific timing strategies and studying strategies, this was for the ACT as a whole. In my next four videos, I'm gonna break down the English section, math, science, and reading in much more detail and give very specific tips on what websites, books to use for each one of those sections and how to break down the timing for each one of those sections and some other little tips. So please subscribe and like and comment on this video if you learned something or you found this helpful and check out my new videos. There's definitely more to come.